Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to do another mini decor video and I'm going to show you how to make a sign out of it and we're going to be building minis today. How fun is that? So I got some of these Easter shadow box signs, box signs. I took off the hanger and I'm spackling the holes. And save those hangers because if you want to hang the sign at the end, you can use those hangers that we took off to put on the back of the sign and you could actually hang it on the wall. Or you can freestand it, which is probably what I do with most of my signs. <laughs> so now I'm just using some white chalk paint and I'm painting the inside of these boxes. I'm not painting the whole inside because I am going to be covering it. I'm just making sure that the sides and the edges are covered. Now using two of the long signs, this is a fall one from Dollar Tree, but pretty much every season you can get these long signs. I took the Happy Fall off and I'm actually repurposing it and using it on the back of it to keep these two signs together. And then I'm going to come in with some popsicle sticks and really secure the back of this sign using hot glue on some of the popsicle sticks and on a couple of them I use that Loctite to really make sure the sign isn't gonna budge <laughs> and it works out pretty good. We can always make it through. After I had the sign secured I came in with my chalk paint and I just gave this a real light coat on the um, sign. I wanted to see some of the brown show through. In a previous video, I showed you how to use these wire twists to make little clay pots. And that's what I'm going to do here using some copper penny paint. I'm going to go over these little orange wire twists just to give them more of that, um, what am I going for, clay pot look. <laughs> they turn out really cute. You got me too. I went on Google Images and I printed out three springtime outdoor um, scenes, I guess you'd call them. I actually printed out two of them and then one of them I printed out vines and you'll see why on that one. But I'm just measuring these, kind of using my finger to measure them and then I'm going to use a glue stick and I'm going to glue them down inside of that shadow box and that's going to be the background. And I'm in love with these Dollar Tree glue sticks. They've been working perfect, especially when you're printing an image out on printer paper. You don't have to worry about bleeding and you don't have to worry about wrinkles. It's amazing. Saving you, you save me too. Yeah, I need it. Don't you need, need it too? Cause I got you. And you got me too. That's such a beautiful spring background. Now it's time to start building. So I'm going to be using the smaller craft sticks and we're going to build a little bunch. Now this whole video, I'm just not a measuring type gal. <laughs> if you are, you can be a lot more exact than I am. What I'm doing is just eyeballing it. <laughs> that works for me. So I'm eyeballing two little um, feet and I'm eyeballing the length of the bunch. I am occasionally putting it up to the shadow box just to make sure I'm not wider than the shadow box. But once I have a length I like, I use that as a template to cut the next piece. And we're going to build a little bitty bunch.
I used hot glue to keep my bench together and once that is made I am going to come in and I'm going to paint it with a mixture of silver lining and white chalk paint. These are the colors I'm going to be using for all three shadow boxes and that way they all kind of coincide with each other. So I'm giving it a coat of silver lining then I'll come back in with some white just to accent it. So I used one of these foam pumpkins in my fall decor and I thought that I could maybe get this to mimic like a basket just because it had the grooves kind of looks like a big bushel basket and I just think I used the wrong color paint so you do this any way you want but I was just trying to paint over this with some burnt umber, copper penny, a little bit of white um, to try to mimic a basket. <laughs> And I don't know, it's probably not my favorite piece in the DIY, but it's still cute. And I'm sure, like I said before many times, this is just like suggestions and something I do might spark an idea that you have and you just run with it. So I was trying to make a little bushel basket here. So I went back in the toy section of Dollar Tree and how cute are these little puppies with their carrier and bed and a uh, dish. How cute. I'm going to use the dish and I'm going to use the comb out of this. I'm also going to use the puppies because they're too cute not to use. And I'm painting the dish in like a metallic color and I'm going to use that as like a flat little flower pot. And then I went in my florals and I'm just cutting tips of my floral off into minis so that I can use them. With those florals that I cut, I'm also going to be putting those inside those copper pots. It's so cute. <laughs> I love those little pots. For my little bushel basket, originally I was going to have this, them sticking up, but I thought they would look better laying down because probably if you're carrying greenery in a basket, it would be laying down, not sticking straight out of it. <laughs> so I just hot glued those laying down on top of that little bushel basket. Now it's time to start assembling our little shadow box and I'm just going to use hot glue. I'm going to put the bench down. I'm going to put the bushel basket in the corner. I'm going to put some flower pots on the bench and then I'm going to add that cute little doggy to it.
And there's shadow box number one. Let's go on to shadow box number two. This is that vine image. I did the same thing as I did with the first one and just used a glue stick. And now we are gonna create a gardening bench using the small popsicle sticks, which ideally they fit perfect in that shadow box. I used nine popsicle sticks. Then I took some more popsicle sticks and I put them on the front. This isn't the back, it's the front and I'm gonna make the bench. And the top part is gonna mimic like a little shelf. It ends up looking kind of like a barnyard fence, which is pretty cool. So I glued those to the front and I trimmed the edges off. And then I just started building the bottom bench, just making, putting two popsicle sticks together and then building legs. It's really simple to do. I thought this would be cute to add a little shelf underneath the table, so I just used my Sharpie and cut off that, uh, traced <laughs> where I wanted to cut off the edges and hot glued a little shelf underneath the table. Now I'm going to use my burnt umber and I'm going to paint this whole bench in that burnt umber and that's all I'm going to do. It No, actually, I think I come back in with a little bit of white, sorry. I do come in with a little bit of white after that and just highlight the edges. And it's so rustic, so country and it looks so much like a mini little gardening bench. 
I took the little comb and I painted that metallic and that's going to mimic a little tool. It's really neat because these the toy section, you can get so many in a package for a dollar that you can use for different crafts. I printed out on Google Images some gardening um, pictures. You print out whatever you want. And then using those little bitty mini chalkboards that you can get at Dollar Tree for $4, I'm going to make a little sign with the uh, picture I printed out that has gardening tools on it. And that's going to be a sign for the top of our bench. I showed you the orange wire um, covers. These are the gray ones and they're a little bit smaller. So here's all the little pieces that we're gonna use to assemble our gardening bench. First, I'm gonna place the bench down, hot glue it to the shadow box, and then we're gonna start decorating it. I love this. I've always wanted one, <laughs> actually, and I think this is so cute as a mini, but I'm gonna take that sign and we're going to hot glue that to the top. I'm going to take the little gardening saying picture and I'm just going to use my glue um, stick to put that at the very top of the bench. And then we're going to add all the little flower pots and that little doggy brush that I'm mimicking as a gardening tool. Put that on there and just start making the bench come alive. so cute <laughs> it's so rustic country i love it now for the third channel box i printed this gorgeous pink um landscape picture and we're gonna make a swing so again i used nine popsicle sticks um oh i'm getting ahead of myself first we're gonna make the stand for the swing which is just taking three popsicle sticks the little mini ones craft sticks and we're going to hot glue those together in each corner. And then I'm going to take a, another popsicle stick and I'm going to trim it down using my shadow box to measure it so that it would be even when it sticks out of the shadow box but not go over it. So you're going to just want to take your popsicle stick, cut it in half, and then start trimming till you have the right size where it just is flush with your shadow box. Just like the bench, I came in with some silver lining and some white and I painted the frame of the swing.
One of the larger popsicle sticks or craft sticks was perfect for the seat of the swing. It was a perfect measurement to um, be the width so it wouldn't stick out of the shadow box. And I just cut it down to fit inside my frame. And then I painted both sides with silver lining and white. And that's going to be the seat. Then I came in with the little skinny popsicle sticks, and that's where I used nine of them to make the back of the seat. And I found out, I must have been using ones from my Dollar, Dollar General or Walmart. These are actually from Dollar Tree, and man, these cut so much easier. <laughs> so I lined nine of them up, and I wanted a shape on the back of the seat, and to get that shape all I had to do was start pushing them down so that you get a nice little shape to the back of your chair. I glued a popsicle stick to the bottom where I wanted my bench to be where I wanted the seat to be on this and then I just trimmed the rest of it. Before you trim, you can set it inside your frame and make sure you're exactly where you want to be to cut off the bottom. And then you just hot glue the seat to the back of your swing. The seat part is painted in the silver lining and I just wanted a little contrast so I did not use silver lining for the back of the swing, I just used white. Again, I'm eyeballing. <laughs> um, it's really hard to measure minis, so I'm just like eyeballing it. Once I have one cut the right way, I use it as a template for the other side. And right now we're just making the armrest for the swing. I put a little glue on the seat of the swing and I put one of my little popsicle sticks that I cut in front. Then the other popsicle stick, I put glue on the edge of it and I put glue on the top of the little piece that I had glued to the bench and secured that to the swing. As a young girl, it feels were mine. We played hide and seek for hours, raised our shadows among the pines, so offshore playful and free, without a care in the world. I so stinking cute. <laughs> Now we're gonna make a little hanger for it. And I had this white rope that I got from Walmart and I'm just gonna cut two pieces of rope, hot glue them to those armrests, and then hot glue the swing down inside of the shadow box. Yes, I know you're seeing the top right now, but I am gonna show you as I go. So it's so hard to like get in there i can't get that kind of view but each step i do i'll flip it down so that you can see what i'm doing so right now we're going to put the base in oh i did hot glue two just normal um not unpainted popsicle sticks down as a floor and i thought that was a really nice contrast with the natural wood and i did glue two of those down first now i'm putting the base or the stand 
Once I have the stand hot glued inside the shadow box, I'm going to take my swing and hot glue that to the back of the shadow box where I want it looking like it's hanging. And then I'll use my rope, hot glue the one part to the armrest, make sure I have it where I want it before I hot glue the other part to the shadow box. And you'll see, because I'll flip it kind of upwards so that you can see. You want your swing in there the way you want it first before you attach the rope to the top. What's nice about that frame is that it hides the rope being hot glued to the top of the shadow box. So then once you have everything where you want it, you position the rope wherever you want it and just hot glue it to the top of the shadow box behind the frame. Two little doggies came in that toy package. <laughs> I didn't want this one to feel left out. So I hot glued him sitting on the swing. So stinking cute. <laughs> I don't know, I just love these little doggies. But you can do whatever you want. You could put little flowers on it or just leave it blank because it's super cute just the way it is. Now we're gonna put everything together and make this into a spring mini farmhouse sign. <laughs> um, you could do this long ways or you could do it sideways, whatever you want on this. I chose to do it long ways. And again, I just don't, I'm not a good person to use a measuring tape. I tried a little bit, but eyeballing it works for me. I did use some Dollar Tree signs on the side um, as a guide to keep these straight. You'll see me put those down. All I'm using those for is to keep all of them straight and level going in the same direction. And then I kind of eyeballed where to put the middle one. So once I had the ones on the ends that I liked, I kind of carefully flipped them up, added some hot glue and glued them down to the sign. <laughs> You can measure. You can do this any way you want. This works for me. I added some of that white rope to each end and just hot glued it to the back. Now, here's where if you wanted this to hang on the wall, those hangers that we removed from the shadow boxes, you could put one on each end of the sign, attach them back onto the back of the sign, and you could hang this from the wall. I played around a little bit. I wasn't sure if maybe I should put some more rope going the other direction, but I just thought that looked too busy. I'm not, uh, I still think it looks too busy. <laughs> so I left it the way it is. And there it is. 
Uh, I've had so many people ask me when I do these little shadow box minis, you know, how do you display them? And I thought this would be neat to take your minis and actually make a farmhouse sign with them. And if you don't want to make it into a sign, these boxes could go on a tear tray, on a shelf. There is a lot of different ways you can display your little boxes. Um, you could even add four of these and have them butt up to each other and make one cohesive little mini um, display on this sign. But I just wanted to show you guys a different way that you could display your minis. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of fun as always making this video for you. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that subscribe. Ring that bell for notifications. And if you liked it, please hit that like button. It really helps me out. I appreciate and love you all. And thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a blessed and wonderful day. And I'll see you again soon. Bye, y'all.